Dr. Butte, what excites you about big data? I mean, look at the excitement around us today. It's just an amazing day. It's going to be an amazing uh, conference here. I think uh, Todd Park really started us off uh, on a great direction. That it's not just that there's big data. We've always had more data than we knew what to deal with, do with, but we're releasing it to the public to get more ideas from others who might not be data scientists. So really what's exciting is that data has the power to revolutionize things and to transform things, whether it's policies or uh, the way we practice medicine. That's, it's exciting to me as a medical doctor when I see that we can give data to anywhere from high school kids to uh, computer scientists in other countries. They figure out what's happening and they can help inform all of us as practicing physicians or nurses. It's just an amazing time. How could you not be excited about this? And what are you hoping for conference participants and viewers to take away from this? Yeah, so I think the conference participants today, we have uh, something like 500 people attending over the next three days. I really hope that they get an idea of not just where things are, but where they're going. Uh, our participants include uh, anywhere from uh, graduate students to even some undergrads and high school students, all the way to venture capitalists, to full professors, department chairs. I'm hoping they all see that data sciences, data-driven research uh, is really part of all research today, and also development, and even uh, the startup companies around us can all benefit from this kind of work. Right. And why do you think a conference like this is so timely right now? I think we, it, this is absolutely the right time to have a conference like this. I think uh, this is the second year now that we're running this at Stanford. We look around, we still don't see that many academic meetings in big data or data-driven sciences in biomedicine. Uh, I think we see one or the other, but the combination, that synergy is really important, and that's what we're trying to highlight here. And due to the generous, uh, really philanthropic support from Li Ka-shing Foundation, we can really work with Oxford to make this happen. You're in a very fortunate position where you're both a physician and a scientist. How do you see physicians contributing to this field in the years to come? I think physicians today are just starting to realize what they can do with this data. A physician finds it easier to find a house using Google uh, than is to find something about their patients using the electronic medical record systems. And that has to change. I think the physicians know they're the data collectors today. They enter a lot of the data that we process. They're going to become data curators. They're going to make sure the data on their patients is accurate. And then they're going to be actually the data scientists of the future. For, like a doctor with a patient, they don't understand. They have, to, they have to have the tools to say, let me find other patients like this patient. What did we do in the past? What worked, what didn't work in real time, right? Not something that someone generated a report for, but right now, what do I do with this patient? And I think that's what we've got to get to, not in my lifetime, in the next five to 10 years. We've got to create those tools and then create that cohort of physicians ready to use those tools. And then taking a step back to the everyday layperson, what is big data? How would you describe it to them? Yeah, so what is big data? I mean, it's a tough, uh, it's a, two simple words are really tough to define. Steve Quake got a lot of laughs by saying uh, this morning that, uh, if, you, uh, if you're running a lab and you have an IT guy, you're doing big data. I don't know if that's one definition, but uh, I think sometimes it's bigger data than you know what to do with. And sometimes you have enough data that you might have collected it for one reason, but you have this intuition that there's more in there than what you're able to find. Maybe there's correlations, maybe there's patterns, and you have get this intuitive feel that there's something missing that you're not really looking at. I would say that's probably what I call big data. It's not about the megabytes, it's not about the cloud. I think it's that there's more here in this data set than we're already knowing what to do with. And how did you personally stumble upon this field? I, I, I was lucky, I have to say. I got a dual training going back to high school and uh, with a, a biologist father and a computer scientist mom, uh, doing both uh, computer science as an undergrad and medical school. So I think I was lucky that I kind of chose one path that seemed to get me here. Others are entering this field by doing one first and then the other, and now we're actually getting undergrads dual trained to computational biology, other campuses on, uh, around the country starting this kind of major, of uh, having a major of computational biology or bioinformatics. So I think there's a lot of paths to this field, I think, but people think quantitatively, people think about the biology medicine, they're the ones who are able to make a difference here. Right. And Dr. Butte, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? I think it's an amazing time to be in research. I know there's a lot of negativity in the world, I think, People are worried about NIH funding and funding from government sources. But just think of what amazing time we live in, that we make scientists share data with others. In some ways, it's a very empowering concept. And not just empowering for us as researchers, but also the, the researchers to come, the high school students, but also others in other countries that might not be able to generate this data, but might have the intellectual know-how of what to find in that data. This is the most amazing time in the world to be doing this kind of research, so. Well put. 
Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.